Hey guys, welcome back. One of the biggest landmark events in the original Halo trilogy was the alliance formed between the elites and humanity. The two species had been mortal enemies for almost three decades, but in the face of total annihilation, joined forces to ensure their survival. However, for obvious reasons, there was a lot of tension between the two species, and today I want to take a totally hypothetical look at what would have happened during Halo 3's story if this tension reached a boiling point and the Elite betrayed humanity. Now, obviously breaking the truce would have served the Elites no purpose whatsoever and would have only led to total galactic annihilation, but let's just say hypothetically that Lord Hood insulted Artas's mandibles and one thing then led to another. So before we do start, I just want to let you guys know that I recently upgraded my entire recording setup, so new mic, new audio interface and everything, so tell me how you think my voice sounds and if there's anything that I can do to make it sound better. I'm still trying to get used to it, it's all very new to me, I'm still getting used to all the new gear, so go easy on me for now, but over the next like three or four videos, my voice should really start sounding buttery smooth. So, to understand the shockwave of events that such a betrayal would have had on Halo 3's story, we first need to choose a point in the story at which it happens, and there's one that to me stands out above all the others, the ending of Floodgate. This to me is where tensions between the two species felt like they were at their absolute peak. Artas just glassed half of the second largest continent on Earth without consulting the humans first, and now he's telling Lord Hood that humanity's entire home planet is doomed and should just be abandoned in favour of his plan to follow truth to the Ark and stop the Great Journey. I'd argue that this was the closest we ever got to the truth being broken, so it's going to be our first starting point for this little hypothetical. Now again, let me just remind you before we go on, none of this is canon and some of it might not even be rooted that much in the canon. This is purely my own personal theory for what what may have happened if a betrayal were to take place. Also, I think most of the background footage will most likely just be slightly relevant gameplay because, well, thankfully, this didn't actually happen, so there's no picture or video that I can show of it. So, the elites insist that Earth is doomed by the Flood and that the UNSC should abandon the planet and everyone on it and follow them to the Ark. Hood, Chief, Miranda and everyone else entirely disagrees. The tension reaches a boiling point, and the elites abandon humanity and head through the portal themselves. Or, alternatively, Arbiter assassinates Hood, and they flee through the portal while humanity are forced to stay behind and deal with the impending Flood threat, despite what just happened to their de facto leader. What happens next? Well, initially, I don't actually think that much would change. The Elite's fleet would still be outnumbered 3 to 1, but due to Artas's excellent skill as a shipmaster, they'd still come out of the even fight on top. Rather than the UNSC going down to the Ark during the battle, I imagine there'd be plenty of Elite infantry on board the ships who weren't exactly needed during the orbital battle that could fill that role. And if you want to be super technical, maybe there were allied grunts and jackals and hunters on board the ships that could join them as well. They were never shown in Halo 3, but that was only because Bungie thought it would confuse the player if they were allied with species that they were simultaneously killing. Phantoms would be loaded up with all able-bodied troops and they'd begin their search for the Ark's cartographer just like normal, except their journey to the cartographer would be slightly different. There'd be higher casualties because, well, Chief wouldn't be there to mow down hordes upon hordes of Covenant, but they'd be able to just head straight to the cartographer as opposed to clearing an LZ for the dawn. With the help of Spark and maybe a resupply or two, the Arbiter will be able to lead his troops, punch through the Covenant's defences and make it to the cartographer. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the UNSC, despite Lord Hood's death, would pretty much be sat there twiddling their thumbs. They stayed behind because both the elites and the humans thought the entire Flood army, including the now infected High Charity, was on its way to Earth and that the ship that crashed in Voy was the beginning of what was to come. Well, they were wrong. <laughs> when the Gravemind learned of Truth's intentions to fire the Halo Array, he diverted all his forces to Mars, where he created a portal using precursor neural physics and jumped to the Ark. So the impending threat of annihilation to Earth that sparked the Elite's betrayal of humanity was based on a false prediction. However, 
that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, as weird as it might sound, Chief and Miranda following Lord Hood's orders and remaining at Earth, along with the rest of the UNSC, would have actually been a much better idea than going to the Ark with the Elites. Whether they'd betrayed them or not, I'll explain why in a minute. Back at the Ark, the Arbiter and the Elites would have found the Citadel where Truth is going to activate the Array, and just like usual, they'll have to disable the shield protecting the Citadel in three separate towers, each guarded by Covenant forces. In the absence of Chief and Johnson, we could accurately assume that Utse to Harm and Entho Sarum, the two Elites in Halo 3's co-op, would lead the other two teams to the first and third towers. To keep things simple, I'm going to say that the towers play out just like usual. Utsi and the Arbiter deactivate the first and second tower fine, but brute reinforcements sent by Truth stop the Elites at the third tower, and instead of capturing Entho, like they did with Johnson, they kill him. F in the chat for my boy Entho. Just like before, RB, Utsi and the Elites go to Tower 3, they clear it out and disable the shield. But this is where humanity's absence really starts to change things. When the Flood arrive, a fragment of High Charity tears through the Shadow of Intent, significantly damaging it and disabling its weapon system, which causes it to retreat. However, the Shadow of Intent was the only elite ship in Atmosphere. Because of the damage it sustained, it won't be in range to issue a resupply to the Arbiter and his elites for their final push to the Citadel, and obviously because the humans aren't there, Pelicans from the Dawn won't be around to drop off Warthogs and Scorpions. And with what little time they have left before Truth activates the Array, there's no time for another cruiser to enter Atmosphere for support. This means that at the very most, they'd have limited Phantom support as they push to the Citadel on foot. If you wanted to be super generous, you could say that Phantoms in the local area would be able to come and drop off Wraiths and Ghosts, but the only Phantom that we ever see here, and for the rest of the mission in fact, is the Arbiters. We never see any more. With that in mind, whether it's on foot or with limited vehicular support, the Elite stage one final push to the Citadel to stop Truth, but given how weak and undergeared they are, I genuinely don't think they'd be able to make it past the Covenant defences. Think about it. In the normal timeline, it was a tough fight with all the Scorpions and Gorse Warthogs on the ground and Hornets in the air. With at most the odd Ghost and a Wraith or two, it's going to be practically impossible for the Elites. And then, you've got to remember that the fight doesn't even end there. Once they get inside the Citadel, the bridge leading up to Truth is packed with Covenant 2. So, I feel like I can say with confidence that without Chief and the humans, the overwhelming defense staged by the two Scarabs and hundreds of Covenant infantry at the Spire would prove far too much for Arbiter and the Elites. And there, they'd fail their mission to stop Truth before he fired the Array. Or would they? Earlier I said that the UNSC remaining at Earth was actually a far smarter idea than following the Elites to the Ark. And here's why. Truth needs a Reclaimer, a human, to activate the Array. And given humanity's absence, he can't just capture Johnson or any other Reclaimer at the last minute like he does in Halo 3. Even though the Elites thought they failed to stop him, they actually didn't because his plan was impossible from the get-go. And unfortunately, this here highlights one of the issues with Halo 3's story. Truth and the Covenant are on Earth for weeks, and as far as we know, they never once captured any Reclaimers to be used at the Ark, despite definitely knowing that they'd need one. Truth quite literally goes to the Ark without a Reclaimer, and just so happens to strike the absolute pot of luck and capture Johnson right at the last minute. If he hadn't managed to capture Johnson, his plan would have been totally void. So, if the Elites did betray humanity during the Flood invasion of Earth, the galaxy would have actually been a whole lot safer. Given that Artas's fleet defeated Truths long before the fight at the Citadel, Truth would have been pretty much trapped on the Ark, and Artas would have kept him there until reinforcements, whatever they may be, arrived to avenge the Arbiter and kill Truth once and for all. But let's take this one step further. What if the Elites betrayed humanity before Halo 3 even started? What if the truth was broken before the Arbiter and Johnson even made it back to Earth from Delta Halo? How differently would Halo 3 have played out if the Elites just weren't there to support the UNSC at all? Well, 
quite different. Firstly, recovering Chief would have been a lot harder without the Arbiter's help. The Mombasa Voy area was really heavily occupied by Covenant forces, and I think we could very easily assume that the Arbiter, being the exceptionally skilled warrior that he is, played a large part in fighting through the Covenant to get to Chief. However, on the contrary, I don't really think that Crow's Nest, Savo Highway, or the Storm would have really played out that differently. I mean, the Elites and even the Arbiter have really minor roles in most of the operations on Earth, and provided that Johnson was able to rescue Chief without the Arbiter's help, they wouldn't really have any issue punching through the brute defences. With that said though, the absence of the Elites when the Flood arrive on Earth would cause the most significant change to the timeline in this entire video. Not only would Chief have to fight through hordes upon hordes of Flood all by himself, but the Shadow of Intent wouldn't arrive to provide support. This means that not only would the Special Forces elites not be there to fight, but the entire infected exclusion zone surrounding the crashed ship would go entirely unglassed. And given how angry Hood was at Artas for following the proper containment protocols and glassing like the entire area, I wouldn't be surprised if without Artas there to provide his extensive flood knowledge, he was too conservative with containment procedures, nuking just the crash site to minimise collateral damage, not knowing how easily and more importantly how quietly the flood can spread. With that in mind, it really wouldn't shock me if more flood outbreaks started popping up in other regions of Africa and maybe even in the Middle East, all thanks to HUD's reserved attitude to obliterate part of Earth even when doing so was quite literally required for humanity's survival. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. The flood would continue to spread across Earth and Guilty Spark wouldn't be there to fix Cortana's message from the ship where she reveals that the way to beat the flood is on the other side of the portal. And given that defending Earth was HUD's priority, part of me doubts that he'd even follow true through the portal, instead opting to stay at Earth and defend it from the flood. But again, like we mentioned earlier, provided that Truth still doesn't take a reclaimer with him to the Ark from Earth, him being at the Ark really doesn't matter that much. Whether the UNSC would be able to keep containing the flood outbreaks that would undoubtedly keep popping up as the airborne spores spread across the planet is up in the air, quite honestly, but the fact of the matter is that if the elites were to have betrayed and separated from the humans before Halo 3, Earth would be in quite the predicament. Now, to bring this whole thing full circle, or I guess I should say half circle, after the war, only end up betraying the elites anyway, but in secrecy, so maybe sometime soon we'll see the real repercussions of mounting tensions between the two species. I mean, recently in the lore, in 2558, Artas shot down a bunch of Oni prowlers that were trailing him, so maybe these tensions are actually properly reaching the boiling point now. Only time will tell. And so, that is what I think would have happened during Halo 3's story if the Elites were to have betrayed the humans. If you think that it would have gone any differently, then please let me hear your thoughts and theories down below in the comments. Obviously, this is something that neither side could have ever afforded to happen given what was at stake, but, you know, it's always fun to speculate. But with all that said, I think that'll do for today. I want to give a huge thank you to Demon Core and Mecha Matrix for the new Primordial Pledges over on Patreon, as well as, of course, everyone else who supports me over there. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one.